A lot of you guys have been asking me how to do the geological time scale project. So I decided to make a video to explain how that works. Basically, you're supposed to do a creative timeline that includes all the information that I listed in the instructions. There are 133 facts, not including the facts that about the atmosphere that you may add, choose to add if you want to for extra credit. Uh, you also need to include all the divisions of time that I required, and they're, they're right here including the arids, periods, and epochs. Now, some of those areas and periods are broken down further by scientists, but you do not need to break it down more than I already broke it down. These are the only ones that I required. And you basically need to create something that looks like this. You create a geological timeline scale, and it has all the time periods of interest in there, as you can see there, and you put them in order, and you break down each era into the periods, each period into the epochs and you all them then you put the time range from the initiation of each of the periods now obviously if you're doing this as a real timeline it will be a lot larger than this and it may take you several pieces of paper next to each other to actually create a timeline and put all the events inside of it and as you can see you have to include the date ranges for all the time periods and then what you have to do is you have to research and organize the information in sequential order because the categories that's listed below they're squ they're scrambled the events are not necessarily in the order they actually occur and although you don't actually need to put the exact date for the events, you actually have to put them within the correct time frame and in the appropriate order within the period. In other words, events within a period need to be in order. And then, uh, if the events happen at the same time, you post them either on top of each other or next to each other. And if they spend many ages, you're going to put the starting point and the ending point point of the event. And then you're also going to be graded based on illustrations for each event. So, for example, the first event, which is fusion begins within the sun, I can go ahead and put a little picture of the sun there so to represent what that is. Now, remember that you're going to be graded on the creativity of the illustrations, the inclusion of the information, and the accuracy of the order of the events. And all writing that is done must be done by hand. And you can go ahead and print the picture if you want but you don't have to. It can be a simple picture, small picture. It doesn't need to be anything over the top. It's just a little picture to represent the event. Now, there are several ways you can do this. You can do it as a timeline, and you can actually list the events within the timeline with the pictures within the timeline, or you can actually do it as a booklet where you actually put, for example, a cover page saying geological timeline, and then you put the first page will be like an index for the pages for everything is going to be at. Then you can start with a cover page saying pre-Cambrian time, and, you're gonna, and then you do the events that happened during that time in the categories, whatever. Or you, then you can do another cover page for Cambrian time. Do the same thing. Ordovich and Silurian, Devonian, same thing. Then you do a cover page for Carboniferous. But since the Carboniferous is divided into periods, you put another cover page for the first period of Carboniferous, which is called the Mississippian, after that. And so forth. And, and then you start putting the events all in a sequential order. And with that's what doing the booklet. You can also do it just a timeline paper next to paper next to paper and it kind of like list all the events sequentially like that and another thing you can do to save you space and paper is that you can make a list of all the events like this one remember that you have to write it by hand and after each event that you write you can put an illustration for it and make you make sure that the events are number coded in other words that it has a key for this event then what you do is you go back to your timeline or your booklet and you put the events with the, using the key within the booklet. So you would have a lot, of, a lot of pages where you list the events and put the illustration on them within the categories they belong to. And then you put that in the booklet. And you can then put the events in categories. For example, you can put several rows, on the, in one row for astronomical events, one row for geological events, one row for all events. Or you can put all the events within the same row, but color code the events by the category they're at. So, for example, I'm going to do the astronomy events in dark blue. So, let's say fusion begins within the sun. So, I'm going to put that. Fusion begins within the sun. That's event number one. It happened a long time ago. So, remember, you're going to do this by hand, but I think it's a good idea to plan it out on the computer first of all. You know, so put the event in dark blue. All right, then he put large planetesimal collision leads to the ejection of crust mental material into the Earth's orbit, which later coalesces to form the moon. That's talking about the giant impact hypothesis that happened sometime during the Procambian time. So we're going to put that too, but definitely after one. Solar winds from the sun begin to push lighter elements into the outer parts of the solar system. That happened after fusion will start. And so, but before the giant impact hypothesis, so the three is going to be between one and two. Uh, the solar system formation begins from a solar nebula compressed by gravity after a nearby supernova explosion pushes the gaseous cloud together. That happened before the fusion started, so 4 would be the first event. 
And then I go, while the sun is toward a star, gathering gases, protoplanetary disks form around it, denser elements exert greater gravitational pull and sink further into the center of the cloud. So that's going to happen right after the first formation thing happens. So I'm going to put event 5 right there. And there you go. There you have all the events that happen in sequential order. Now, all of this, by the way, must have happened before any kind of atmosphere was developed. So you know the astronomical events will be ha be happening before any astronomical atmosphere events. Now, although from now on, no more events will be in the astronomy category. So you, if there's any other astronomical event that actually happened, you can actually include that within the astronomy category if you're doing this in categories. In other words, if, you, if you're creating like... Um, a row just for astronomy okay and you're going to put that in a, in a category um, whenever it says for example in the biological events 122 it says for example most likely caused by climate change or sea level fluctuations or asteroid impact you can you could if you wanted to even though that's under bio biosphere facts add that to the astronomy category as well that's only of course if you're doing it within a categories if you're just doing it within events in general which are color coded you're not going to need to do that okay and even if you are doing within categories like this it is important that you put the events uh, in sequential order so for example if you know the let, let's go to atmosphere so now i'm going to add atmosphere events so let's see number number 49 antarctica develops a polar ice cap that's going to go ahead and happen sometime during the eocene about 38 million years ago so we're going to put that here 49 and i'm going to color code that with a different color, I'm going to do it in light blue. Okay, so that's 49. Okay, and then if it says aquatic photosynthetic life forms, such as cyanobacteria, begin to produce oxygen and change the atmosphere. That's going to be sometime during the pre cambrian time, event 50. Now, that must have happened after the formation of the giant impact hypothesis. So I'm going to put that to the right of event 2. You know, so there you go. And you see how that actually starts organizing itself. By the way, if I was doing this as one major event color-coded, I wouldn't need to create a separate row for atmosphere. And the way I would do it is I would just put event 50 up here. But make sure I color-code it as an atmosphere event. And let me delete that. And I can just do it like that. You know, And I actually would prefer that you do it like that. But that makes it easier to put all the events in sequential order. Let's keep going. Uh, 51. Atmosphere reaches modern oxygen-rich levels. That happened during the order of VCN. So you're going to put, go ahead and put 51 here. Maybe remember the color coded with the correct color. And there you go. And as you can see, as you go along and do this more and more, you will just basically find all the different events. Make sure that you put pictures on the list and put them in the order. To research the information for this project, I suggest that you guys look at the chapter that's called Geological Time that's posted along with the assignment. It's chapter 9 in your textbook. You can also watch the last three videos of the Plate Tectonics video lecture series. Where I do a lot of the review about these facts in that video, so it's a good idea to actually watch that. It will help you a lot. And finally, you always have Google to research the facts, and good luck. I hope that clarifies how to do the project and that you have fun trying to figure out this puzzle and talking about the history of the Earth. See you guys later.